You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here once again. And today, we have another amazing show lined up for y'all. We're going to talk to Jeremy Grader and Zach Tucker. They are the two duels of the amazing podcast, The Fit Mess Podcast, thefitnesspodcast.com. You can learn all about what they do. It is very inspirational and is also all about education and taking action. So first and foremost, I want to give y'all all the time y'all can have. Welcome to you, Jeremy and Zach. How y'all both doing today, man? So good. Thank you so much for having us on the show, man. We really appreciate it. So man, yeah. I know we have a lot to cover. I'll start with you, Zach. How did you meet Jeremy? And who's the one that had the greatest idea for this podcast, man? Yeah, uh, Jeremy and I met uh, through our wives, actually. Uh, we, we both have children who are the same age, and our, our wives met at a, a running group. And, you know, funny enough, our wives thought that we would get along, so they invited everyone to breakfast one morning. And Jeremy and I sat down, you know, looking each other up and down, trying to figure out if, you know, he was a tough guy or... I needed to, you know, keep my shield up or something. Um, turns out we both really loved Star Wars and like, you know, the conversation, we we hit it off. And, you know, a few years later, we we became really good friends. Um, and we got to the point where we we're having these like really open and vulnerable conversations about mental health, physical health, and, you know, how hard it is to be a dad and, you know, be a husband and be all the things to everyone else and still take care of yourself. Um, and and I, I'm going to take credit for it because I think it was my idea where I said, you know, guys aren't really having these conversations. We need to, you know, you, you've done podcasting before, Jeremy. Why don't we just start having these conversations, you know, on a podcast? And he was very, very reluctant to do yeah, that. I said, for, I said that's many a terrible months. idea. That's, that's a horrible <laughs> idea. Who the hell are we to give people advice on, you know, how to take care of themselves and live live happier, healthier lives? And but then I got curious and, and I started digging into what are these podcasts? Like what are these sort of self, self-development, self you know, personal wellness podcasts? And I started listening to more and more of them. And so many of them were really just reaching out to experts and, and sharing the perspective of experts with an audience that is on this journey to take better care of themselves. And I thought, well, geez, I, I can talk to people all day long. That's no big deal. Let's get some people on the phone and talk to them about how to make, uh, make ourselves healthier and happier. And that's really... That was the clincher for me. That's when I was like, okay, good. I don't have to go get, you know, some psychology certificate that proves that I know a thing or two. We can just call people who actually know stuff and learn from them while sharing the information with an audience. And so that was really where the thing came from. And I love that because the podcast that y'all do is all about, you know, interview style where you, you, like you just said, you have experts in the field, celebrities and people just a major influence to just share actionable steps that the listener can take for not just having a fulfilled life, but just growing in life. Because it's one thing to just have a happy, happy, joy, joy podcast show, but it's another thing when you can have storytelling of someone can express their true life story of where they were and now where they're headed. So touch on that, man. Yeah, that's that's very much where you know I felt comfortable because I've I've always struggled to make connections with people and, and Zach was a rare one because we did hit it off and, and we were able to have pretty real conversations pretty early in our relationship where you know most of the time especially with guys right you get in the same room and it's like oh did you watch the sports ball event last night how about the local team they did a thing or two and you know that's just that's just not me I don't want to have these surface level conversations we we only get so much time on this rock so let's make the most of it and have real connections with people. And that's what the thing was for me is it was a place to sort of share how hard it is to do all these things that we're trying to do to, to take care of ourselves and, and to just really normalize this experience for people. Because when you do decide to go down, you know, this, this spiritual path, this self healing journey or whatever, it is so lonely. It's just so isolating. You feel like you're the only one feeling these things. You're the only one that's got the, whatever trauma you bring to the table. And so, you know, for, for us, to hear from people that say, yeah, me too, that, that, you know, I went through the same thing. I'm going through the same thing. What did you do when, and to be able to now pull from, you know, 140 episodes of, of interviews and now, you know, 10 years of life experience and say, you know, I'm no expert, but here's what I've learned and here's what I've done. And here's what works for me. 
that's been huge. That's just been amazing. And and to to be able to be vulnerable with an audience like this and to be able to share our our authentic experience uh has has created some great relationships, some great memories with people. And um, you know, I, I really just hope that it's like I said, providing uh some companionship on what's an otherwise incredibly lonely journey. You've been listening to Ivy Focus Radio, and we've been talking to our guests, Jeremy Grader and Zach Tucker, and their amazing podcast show, The Fit Mess. Now, you, Zach, I got to ask a question about the artwork, because the artwork on this podcast is pretty amazing. It's, a, it's literally a guy lifting a giant donut. <laughs> <laughs> What's the concept of that? And uh, I think that was pretty genius. Yeah, we were, uh, when we were, when we were thinking through everything, um, I was doing at the time I was like doing a whole bunch of Sean T workouts. So I was, you know, working out really hard. I, I had my, my workout dialed in really well at the time, but I didn't quite have my eating dialed in. So I was, you know, doing an hour long workout and feeling really good afterwards. And then something kicked in or something happened at work or in life. And I decided, you know what, I need a pint of ice cream or, you know, something along those lines. And I would end up just like eating, um, you know, a lot of emotional eating. And it took, you know, so the donut represents a lot of things. Like it represents emotional eating for me. It represents stress eating for me. Um, so like physical exercise isn't the only part of it. Eating isn't the only part of it. Like in order to really have a balanced, you know, wellness for your, to be balanced, you have to have so many different parts. You have to be eating okay most of the time you have to be you know moving your body sometimes you've got to be thinking about your mental health and where your thoughts are coming from um so it's you know if you notice on the donut there's a bite taken out of it too because as you're working out and you know flipping the donut you take a bite out of it um but it's all about balance to me like you can have some of those sweet things like you can have you don't have to be on 100 percent of the time as long as you're on 80% of the time and doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself 80% of the time, yeah, you can have a little bit of slack, but it's all about balance. And, you know, like you can't just do one thing and expect everything to change. You've got to do a whole bunch of little things. And that's, that's a great point. And with you, Jeremy, being the, the co-host with this podcast, the co-founder of this podcast, you touched on mental health, how that's a big thing that a lot of people are in need of. A lot of people need to pay attention to that. Why is it so key for people to zone in on not just the process of getting better, but being truthful for where they are at, as far as at their path in life, where are they and be real with that. So that way you can have a true transformation. I think a lot of people bring on this path, you know, and to me, this is what the donut represents is all the the heavy baggage, all the stuff, all the things that we let hold us back and, and slow us down. And I think if you can step into this path with an acceptance of where you are, despite where you came from and, and an acceptance of all the trauma and things that happened to you and an awareness that, that, you know, the vast majority of them are not your fault. There are things that happen to you. If you come into this with uh, that acceptance and, and really... I don't like the term self-love because it always comes off kind of kind of woo-woo and, and, and too light, but just really being okay with where you are right now. Where you are right now is perfect. It's exactly where you're supposed to be. Otherwise, you would be somewhere else. So if you can start from there, rather than punishing yourself for that donut you had when you were feeling bad or the <laughs> pint of ice cream because you had a bad day at work, if you can just accept it and just go, you know what, that happened yesterday, but right now I'm here. I'm okay right now and I can do better in an hour and I can do it better in two hours and I can do better in the morning. That's, that's where you start to really win because when it's punishment to go to the gym, when it's punishment to eat a salad, you're not going to keep doing it. You're not going to create a habit of constantly punishing yourself because who wants to live a life of self-punishment? So when you, when you bring that sort of self-respect into this path, then I think that's when you start to see the benefit of now I'm eating better. So I feel better. Now I'm sleeping better. So I have more energy. Now I can go to the gym and I can lift heavy things. And all of a sudden I'm getting stronger and my body wants to do more. And it starts pushing you out the door to go do those things. But like I said, you know, if, if you start from, from a negative place, you're never going to stay consistent and you're not going to stick with it longer than a couple of days. 
Man, speaking of, of being consistent, consistency is, is very key for anybody to see any potential growth of whatever, if it's professional, if it's personal, if it's just a lifestyle. And I have so many people on the show who, who has touched on that, living the moment, because when you live in the moment, you're not worried about the past, you're not worried about the future. You're, you're just like, okay, I'm showing up right now. So for you, Zach, you work out, you exercise. How have you been able to keep yourself motivated to be consistent, knowing that it will pay off if you just show up in the moment? Mm, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, no, there's uh, there's so many things that when I start it, you, you just, there's all that doubt. There's all that resistance to continuing on and the discipline of continuing on whatever it is where you need the consistency. Um, so I really like to take stock of all of my past wins and look at, you know, things that I've done that have taken a long time. Like I'll even go to like, you know, my college degree. I got a four-year degree that took four years. That took consistent effort through four years to get a degree. So I know I can do it, you know, so it, it's not impossible to do. But really, um, you know, to Jeremy's point, the, you know, I love the word self-love myself, but <laughs> being okay with with this slow progress and knowing that you know that instant gratification like we live in the world of social media where you know you post a picture and you want likes immediately um that's not how real change happens and you just have to like unpack that and be curious about it and focus on past wins like i have done this before i have been consistent with this thing and it changed me in this way and this time, whatever it is, I'm going to be consistent with it. It's going to change me. Um, and be honest with yourself. I mean, again, I like to, I like to think that two days of good eating and you know the 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 weight on the scale drops, but that's just water weight. That's not fat. That's not you know it's it's not real. So like whatever it is you're looking at, you really need to make sure that you're deciding to be that person who does whatever the thing is you're trying to do. I love how you just talked about social media, how we are, I'm guilty. I'm still guilty. I still have to catch myself sometimes, but mm -hmm. we all want to have that, like, man, how can I go viral? Google, mm -hmm. how can I go viral <laughs> on one post? And that makes so much sense because I'm guilty of that. I'll just make a, a short little story. Like me trying to market, you know, my show. It's like, man, how can I get celebrity? Like, who wants to be on mm -hmm. my show? And those are humble beginnings, but to your point, me listening to other shows has helped me super grow, if I can say that. My growth process have, has really increased dramatically, just being able to listen to people who are much better than me. So that way I can learn and say, okay, that's why they do this and do that. That's why they don't, you know, jump over the guests and let them breathe and have an actual, you know, full sentence to say. Because it's, a, it's not just a science, it's, it's a lifestyle like, okay, only, and only way for me to get from point A to point B with my goals, I have to be able to measure myself along the way. I love the fact that you said you look back and look at your other wins to remind mm -hmm. you that I can't take five steps, then get to China. It's going to take <laughs> a little bit more steps than that. Mm -hmm. So to mm -hmm. that point, Jeremy, what else can you add to what he's saying about just, I guess, trusting the process? I think, you know, my own experience in the gym this year is similar to that. I, I decided at the beginning of this year that I was just going to go to the gym every day just because it was a part of my identity now. Now I'm the guy that goes to the gym every day. Not because I wanted to lose 20 pounds. Not because I wanted ripped abs. Not because I wanted to, to look great in summer. It was just a part of who I am now. This is just a thing that is part of my routine. And... It, it was sort of liberating because every, I, literally, I think every other time in my life when I started a workout program, by the end of week two, when you've busted your butt every day for an hour or whatever it is, and you get on the scale or you look in the mirror and you're like, what? why am I hurting myself? Why am I going through all this struggle? This sucks. It's not doing anything. What a waste of time. Well, of course, because it's two weeks and you're still eating the donuts, you're still eating the ice cream, you're still doing all the other things that are contributing to what got you into the trouble you're now trying to get out of. And so for me, a lot of it has been really what started me on this path to begin with is just this idea of, of deciding who you want to become and taking the actions that that person would take every day to become them. 
which is different than fake it till you make it, as we learned recently from, from a guest of ours, because by, by faking it, by just putting on the hat of, I'm the spiritual warrior and I can do these things, all of a sudden you're creating this like identity split and there's this conflict in you where it can, it can physically manifest in illness and, and, and physical problems. But when you recognize that there are steps that other people doing the things you want to do, that you can take them, you start to become aware that that is me. That I am capable of those things. And all of a sudden, after a week or two of, of just doing that thing you do every day, because it's that thing you do every day, now you've got that body of evidence. You've got, I can do this for a week. I can do it for two. I can do this for a month. I can do this for a year. I can do this for the rest of my life. And it stops becoming about the vanity and about the number on the scale and, and all the things. It just becomes about, becomes about, it becomes being, becoming the person you're trying to be. That's the, the thing I'm trying to say. I love the point you made about the gym. That was something that became your identity because yeah. you said it. The famous phrase that we have heard probably in college or school or whatever, anybody who studied philosophy, know thyself. I mean, that is the starting point. What you associate yourself with is what you're going to focus on. So if you think of yourself as a winner, you may not be winning because I wouldn't dare say I'm a boxer and try to fight Mike Tyson. You know? Right. I Maybe now. First. Maybe now you could take Tyson. I could probably take him you know, <laughs> if I was a good athlete. But uh, I can probably only do an interview with him. But <laughs> if, if you had that mindset, okay, I have to like, okay, zero in. Where am I truthfully at? Okay, okay, I need to do this while I'm at the gym. So you're not going to be at the gym trying to deadlift 700 pounds and you're looking like me, skinny, looking like Gumby. So <laughs> back to you, Zach, because you've been doing this fitness as well. And I like this because I'm going to use it as a metaphor. Why is it so important for people to be confident where they are versus lie to themselves and say, oh, I can deadlift 700 pounds, just, you know, impress the ladies or impress people? Uh, funny you should ask that because I've got a broken shoulder and a severely injured knee uh, because of things like that. Um, I, I I can remember so many times like walking into the gym and, you know, there happened to be a girl, you know, good looking girl or, you know, some dude next to me that was lifting like a certain amount of weight. And the ego just jumped in and was like, nope, you can lift as much as that guy. You can lift more than him or, oh, she's watching you. You better lift more. Like one more. <laughs> I know. It, I've hurt myself so many times. And actually what, what has the first part of, you know, keeping myself from like making that same mistake in the gym specifically was, um, hey, remember that one time you tried to impress that one girl and you literally tore a ligament in your shoulder? Yeah, that was not fun. Um, it was really embarrassing. So, um, it, I don't know, it, it's taken me a long time to realize, and it's actually like picking the gym, picking the environment, right? I don't want to be in a gym where, um, I call, I call them lovingly meatheads, like the, you know, the dudes who can just lift so much weight. Um, I don't want to be around all of those guys. Like I like a good mix of people who are just Hey, I don't care how much I'm lifting. I'm just lifting what I can lift. And that, and that counts in every aspect of my life, right? I don't want to be working with a whole bunch of guys who, you know, thump their chest and think they're the, the greatest people in the world. Um, so for me, it was recognizing that my ego can get out of hand occasionally and can take over. Um, but then also changing my environment and making sure that I'm not in places where my ego has that opportunity to go crazy, right? know thyself. I know that if I'm in a spot where my ego has the opportunity, I might be tempted to lift a little bit too much and break something else. I'm over 40. I can't, I can't come back from injuries like that anymore. So my ego had to take the back seat. And that's some good start right there. And uh, I know we coming up on time, but I want to squeeze something in real quick. You, you talked about something that I think is very key for the audience to tune in. And that is almost being humble enough to realize this is part where I need to start versus this is what I need to do to impress so-and-so or to fit in in the crowd or, or whatever. Because if you have that concept mind of, of thinking that, okay, I must start at this level when I'm really at this lower level, 
then to your point, you could hurt yourself. And that's a great metaphor in life if, if you're trying to jump steps ahead where you're only really ready for step one. Mm-hmm. You're, you're going to have a oops and you're just going to have a lack of experience because that level 10 probably requires all the previous experience from nine, eight, seven, six, five, and so on. But if you're on level one, I mean, what do you think, Jeremy? Is, is it is it safe to try to skip steps or? No, I mean to your point, I'm I'm not going to get in a ring with Mike Tyson tomorrow, even today. I'm I'm pretty sure he could still whip my butt. So no, you got to do the work. You got to do the training. That's what anyone will tell you is that there's there is no hack. There is no shortcut. There most of those are going to set you back. If there is one hack, it is learning from the people that have gone before you. Get a coach. Get someone who knows the steps instead of trying to figure it out on your own. Don't just walk into the gym tomorrow and go, oh, I think I'll lift some stuff and run on the treadmill for 20 minutes and oh, that'll do because it won't. So get you know, get in a home workout program, get a coach, get a nutritionist, whatever you got to do. But there are people that have had the success before you, even if they're just a couple of steps ahead, they're going to be able to guide you better than you're going to be able to just figure it out. But whatever it is, it starts with small steps every day. So maybe you get to bed a little bit earlier tonight. Maybe tomorrow you drink a little more water. Maybe next week you add a walk into the routine. But but you can't do it all at once either because that's also going to overwhelm you. You can't just completely flip your life around overnight. It's It's building the small habits every day that will eventually lead to the success that you're trying to work for. But fall in love with the journey of getting there because if it's all about just getting to that goal, you're going to get there and it's going to be really hollow and and you're going to realize, oh man, what next? So you just, you really got to fall in love with the journey. Man, so many go, golden gems in, that's, in those multiple statements that you just said because that whole, like, you can't just flip your life all around at once. You can't do it overnight. What I was listening right now, like, we're not just talking about gym and fitness. We're also talking about, like, your life like your personal life, your pre- your professional life, your goals, whatever your goals are, you're not going to do it in one day, period. Anything that's worth like living for and seeing to grow has to be nurtured, has to be, you know, mentored by people that are wise and have done the things that you're striving to do. All that's good stuff. Like everything I heard is amazing. Y'all go to the website, the fit, the fitmess.com. Listen to the fitness podcast because we've been talking to Zach Tucker and Jeremy Grader. Man, guys, it's been fun. Uh, I'll let y'all have the honors to close us out, man. How can people contact all, all y'all if, if they want to have more resources to learn about or just to be connected? The easiest way is just our, like you said, our website, thefitmess.com. We're everywhere on social media at Fitmess Guys. Uh, you can email us. We're, we're easily accessible online. So we're, we're happy to hear from folks and uh, would, would be honored to, to have your audience listen. And if I can ask one favor of your audience, you know, this doing these podcasts, it takes a ton of work. And so if you can go to the, to the whatever podcast player you're listening to right now, leave a five star review, a, a rating. It takes a ton of work to put these things together. So, you know, su- support this show, support our show, support whatever podcast you listen to. Those those ratings and reviews really mean a lot. So t- thank you for the opportunity. Awesome, man. I want to thank you both. And also, Zach, man, someone who is wanting to listen to the show, the Fitness Podcast. Give us a teaser. I know y'all got a ton of guests lined up. What's something that you're hoping to, you know, take the audience on the journey to explore in the next coming episodes Ooh, let's see we we on the spot i know i did (laughs) you did you did um you know i actually think uh there was one that we released uh about three weeks ago that is i'm gonna go i'm gonna go backwards in time three weeks ago so it's really recent but it's all about surrender and how you know we were talking about ego just make surrendering to whatever it is you need to surrender to in order to realize that you are at level one mm-hmm. and not at level six and bring yourself down to that that level is just was really really important to me really uh kind of an, emo- an emotional episode because that surrendering is what really needs to happen before you kind of 
launch into outer space with your growth. Once you, once you figure out that you need to surrender, all things are possible. So that was about three weeks ago, three, three episodes ago. It was actually episode, um, episode 131 with our guest, there Coot, he is. Bla- Coot Blackson. This is just an incredible guru in this space. And yeah, episode 131 of the Fit Mess is what he's talking about. Yeah, it was th- that, that one was hands down one of my favorites because that, that first step of surrendering is so hard to do and it's so painful to do. But once you do it, anything is possible. I'm going to have to check that out. So y'all go check it out with me. The website is thefitness.com. Check out the podcast. I mean, I know Apple Podcasts is a great place to leave a five-star review. I'm going to go there tonight and make a review myself. I'm going to listen to that episode. But once again, it's a true pleasure having you both on, talking about your show, Zach Tucker and Jeremy Grader. True honor, thank you. Uh, say thank you for taking your time at your busy schedule. Talk to I'm Refocus Ready. Honors all on Thanks for having us. Thank you.